I might hear about to go through shit, you know what I'm talking about? Go and talk to you. You gotta go through what you're going through to get what you're going through. You know what I'm talking about? No bush shit. Free ski to preach. Dope boy dream. Coca Cola, no caffeine. I swear, dope boy G night. Back and black and fat albergine. Don't push it. I got to apologize for my mama find out. Uh, yeah, and at least your yeah, mama don't know yet. Yeah, yeah, ain't nobody called and said nothing to mama. So, yeah, mama don't know. So, I got to apologize for mama, mama find out. I'm sure no, our grandmama would have said, would have said something about it. Yeah, they, they want mama to find out. So, listen, this is what I want to say. And I really mean it because I felt bad. And other people say, man, I wouldn't, man, you shouldn't have felt bad. And I kept saying, man, but it was, it was elder women in there, man. Uh, so yeah, I feel bad, uh, but I don't give a damn. Yeah, I don't give a damn about feeling bad. I only care about what's right and what's wrong, right? And sometimes when I, I want to be wrong. So yeah, yeah, my, yeah, I, yeah. So, but I didn't want to be wrong in that situation. Uh, I never want to be uh, unruly uh, in front of the elder black women. Uh, I never disrespect women and ladies. And uh, I disrespect bitches and hoes. I know the difference when I see a bitch. Women don't. Women are quiet. That's why no woman. That's why the woman who walked me out to church, you could barely hear her speaking. She was speaking directly to me. Uh, and she was speaking with love. Said, no, baby, don't. So, uh, but there was an older woman that was sitting next to me, well in her 80s. And she kept saying, no, baby. And I kept saying, man, she fucking with me. And she kept telling me, no, baby, just, man, yeah, you, but she was, she was talking to my spirit because that was the devil over there, right? So everybody came to me. They didn't go to the devil's spirit. The devil's spirit stayed there with the phone. Everybody come to the light, right? So the preacher ain't the light neither. That's why he didn't come check the situation or address the situation. Uh, he addressed it like a coward while every, after it was gone. So... That whole day, man, I kept saying, man, I feel bad in the motherfucker, man, this bitch did a trick. So when I found out that they planned to do that, man, I feel dumb in the motherfucker. I let them bitches trick me. So I'm making a public apology to them elders in the community, man. Uh, yeah, no. And I'm only apologizing uh, because I was wrong to, to, to speak and, and behave like that in front of elders. I'm not apologizing because I was in no church. They tried to reason with me by saying this was God's house. They saying this is God's house. Well, my response is I don't give a fuck about this. Man, I done fucked in here before. So I, the church don't mean nothing to me. But I know it means something to them elders in there. They, they worship that house. I lie in church. I cuss in church. Uh, man, I do all kind of things. That's just another motherfucking building to me. But those elders... Uh, those rules don't change, right? So, uh, man, I feel bad in the motherfucker, man, all day long, man, all that night. Uh, why they do that to me, man? Why they do, man? Why they fucking with me like that? Uh, man, that old woman was right there. And now she think I'm a monster. They don't know them people playing to do me like that. Now, they don't know that was a plot against me to try to shame the white woman. They made an open public plot, and, and, and it got out, and they called me the next day and said, man, be careful. They plotted that, so it, it was revealed. That was intentionally done when I showed up. Jackie Craig was involved. You heard Jackie Craig tell that woman, Char she asked, is Deborah Peoples here? She said, no, but Charleston is. She said, I know. They gave me a heads up. That's why she was amping up, right? So lucky for me, they recorded that. Had they not recorded that, all they got here, all mama go see is me cussing in church. And man, I, I said, boy, I went by mama house this morning, and uh, mama was coming out, getting out, coming out the driveway, and I heard say, hold on, girl, let me go get my son a hug. So mama come give me a hug, so she ain't say nothing, cause well, mama see that, mama gonna say something. So I said, yeah, nigga, you been feeling bad, you gotta go and go apologize. So you at least tell me, I don't give a fuck about being disrespectful. Yeah, bitch, you gonna make me say fucked up. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about being disrespectful, nigga. Yeah, get your bitch ass out of here. So, mama say, let me give him a hug. So I said, shit, man, mama don't know. Nigga, you were wrong because you cussed in front of the elders. You ain't wrong for cussing in church. Yeah, nigga done fucked hoes in church, nigga. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about no church ass. So with that being said, 
y'all wrong for having community events at church. Because y'all tried to do Mayor Betsy Price like that one time. Y'all brought Mayor Betsy Price to the church. And she said that y'all was bitching. And y'all went crazy because she said bitch in church. See, church is not a neutral or fair ground. Because it's y'all rules. It's Christian rules. Meaning when I come in, I got to take my hat off. Meaning when I come in, I can't say, well, the hell with this. I got to follow by the church rules. And the church and the state is not supposed to mix. That's why it's always conflict in it. When they have events. That's why it never, that's why when they have political, it never goes because it's not supposed to be inside the church. I have no honor for the church. I don't respect a mosque. I don't respect the church. Man, I cuss inside of any religious building. I pee in the corner. I spit on the floor. I don't respect no motherfucking building. My mama sat me down one time and told me that son Jesus invested in people. He didn't invest in buildings. So I never got caught up in no building. I don't give a fuck about no building. Because the, the, the Jesus that I studied never went inside of a building. As a matter of fact, the Jesus I studied went inside of the church and done what I done. He just didn't cuss. But now that the full truth is out, that I was set up, ambitage, and sought out, they came after me. So they came looking for that. I knew what they were looking for. So I gave it to them. But without the full video, I looked like the bad guy. To those elders in that church, I look like the devil. I look like the bad guy. So that 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 nigga from Heaven 97, Robert, whatever, he get Miss Matty Parker in front of all these people and said, okay now, you saw what Charleston White just done. Are you going to denounce Charleston White? And that white woman refused to do it. She refused to do it. I got up and tried to get away from her. But once I saw what it was, I now my intention was to get away and avoid. But I felt attacked, right? She came and boom, just sat on me. I don't know who she is, so I'm trying to process this shit. Man, I just, I'm, I'm attacked. Everybody is overlooking the fact that, man, I was attacked in church. It was a planned attack. Don't nobody know it's planned attack till afterwards. We see the whole video. They recorded it. She's telling, I'm Charleston White in there. I'm in there not knowing I'm about to be attacked. Man, I got so many threats coming my way. Man, I got shit. So how I'm supposed to respond? Like, a, I'm, I'm a fool. Because it, it works, right? Do the ignorant nigga fool. So that's my game, right? So I get attacked. Man, what the fuck? So I get up and move trying to process this shit. Man, why this bitch come do this with this phone in my man? What the fuck? So I'm trying to process this shit. So now I'm putting the connecting the dots. That's that bitch from Facebook. So you hear me call her nappy head because I remember the nappy hair from Facebook. So now I'm pr pr connecting the dots. Now I'm, I'm connecting the dots. My mind got to process this shit. Man, I'm not expecting. I'm at a mayoral meeting at a church. I'm not expecting no motherfucker to come in and do this. I'm completely thrown off. So when I get up and move, man, this bitch, fuck, that's my norm, that's my natural reaction. Man, motherfucker fucking with me. And I ain't done nothing to the right, so I, so that's my reaction. I don't know to be logical when I done been attacked. So when I sit behind her, they steady fucking with me. You see, she's steady hitting the camera. I'm saying to myself, man, what the fuck? So now I see Patrice turning around, whatever her name, Patrice turning around. So I said, ah, oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Well, they put me in a position to make me do that. Man, I love attention. Man, I love a bunch of people looking at me. I love captivating an audience. Y'all go do this in front of all these people. 
Man, I couldn't deny that. I couldn't get up and say, hey, man, can y'all tell them it wouldn't have went viral. It wouldn't have been effective. I Easy. Why you wear your pants like that? I wear my pants like that because that's easy access, baby. Pass the microphone. Easy. Man, why you cuss like that? I cuss like that to get my point across. I was about 11, 10, 11 years old when I used to play to listen to that song every day. We want easy. Yeah. We so, I, I learned how to cuss from Muddy Hill and Mama Nim. Grandmama Nim cuss in church. Boy, if you don't sit your ass down somewhere. They just do it under their voice where can't nobody else hear it. I'm going to whoop your ass. Like, oh, you better stop it, boy. I'll tell you what. They cuss in church. They just don't do it where other people can hear it. I don't hide my flaws. I am who I am wherever I am. I don't not be me. I can't not be me with my flaws and all. <laughs> Mama and them beat you in church. Pastors lie in church. People lie in church. They fucking church. So don't make it like, oh, he was in church. Man, fuck church. Give a fuck about church. Y'all believe in church. So stop having functions where the community have to come because we don't give a fuck about the church. We coming in smelling like weed. Man, we put we chewing gum. We putting gum under the thing. Man, we don't give a damn about this. Man, we don't. The church in the streets now where Jesus was. So, no, that's why you don't get the young people inside the church no more. Because we can't come who as we are. The church don't allow me to walk through those doors and come as I am, where I am. God meets me where I am, so I ain't got to go to church. Cause God, I, I got to leave who I am at the door just to get in there to go get the God from y'all. So, so they do all this. So in my mind, I don't give a damn about cussing in this place. So I go on stage and do the food. Notice, man, damn near half the church came out with me. Half the church came out with me, man. Didn't nobody go over there with them people. Them people stayed over there talking. And look, look, let me show you the devil. The light, the people left with the light to come aid me. It's okay to, to comfort me. Man, we saw what happened. Man, she, so everybody came with me. The devil in the darkness stayed over there pretending they didn't have a plot. They were saying, we didn't do anything but just come sit over. What we do? I didn't, and she didn't do nothing but just sit down. It was a plot that didn't go. They tried to dig a ditch for me. And somewhere, in that motherfucking scripture, it says if you're digging a ditch, you got to dig two. So now they get Miss Maddie Parker, the next mayor of Fort Worth, Texas, and say, Will you denounce Charleston White? My own people. The work that I do, they don't nearby do this work. I got the mayor to come sit with Deborah, with, with, with Weasel. You think Deborah people, Chris Nettles, would have sat down with that old nigga in the hood? You think Chris Nettles and Deborah Peoples would have sat down with Weasel? Gina Bibbins done met with him. That woman sat down. She didn't come like most politicians come. And let me just let y'all know what she did, black folk. She showed up in Eastwood by herself in her car. Lily White woman coming through Eastwood, Village Creek, Wheelbarger. No security, no protection, just as comfortable as she can be. Walked in a house, didn't look scared, and it's all black men and one white woman. All black men. Now she come to meet with Charleston. People, the, the 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 guy that no black people would meet because they say he foolish. But here this woman coming to meet, it could hurt her. It could be used against her for coming to meet 
with Charleston. They could play videos of me saying, man, look what he say on, he say this. They could use that. Her political opponents could use that. And that's what they tried to do when they found out I was there to support her. Charleston's here with that white woman. So they set out on a plot against me. This ain't the first plot all them black people. That's how I ended up down there. Them white people had to go get permission from black people to kidnap me out of our neighborhood that one time. They had to go to, they was all the black pastors, Eddie Griffin them, man. They all got together about five years ago, Kiev Tatum. They First, they tried to get me away from Weasel. They used to come down there and try to talk to him and, man, you don't need to be down here, man. You don't need to have these kids down here. Al Theo Chris with that church over there, the Black Wall Street Church. Luther Perry, Johnny Muhammad. They, they, man, when I went down there to that classy lady, man, everybody tried to get me. The police tried to, man, Charleston, go find a building. We'll help you get a building. You don't you get away from him. Chief Dean, Charleston, what's your ties to the classy lady and the old man? What do we do for you? Man, he give me a building to work with Key. Everybody wanted me. When they put me in that mental hospital, they told my mama, those shirts that he wore with the nigga word on it. They destroyed those shirts. They remember that old man when he put the word nigga, Texas nigga, on a wall in a city. The word nigga don't hang on no wall nowhere in America. And that old man done that. White people aren't against me. It's the older blacks. When I went to them and they shunned me, when I first started out with my just, I had my programs wrote down in my handwriting. And I was their little protege. And they used to pinch my cheeks and they used to come down to the classy lady and rub my face and tell me how cute I was. But they wouldn't help us. They wouldn't give us no game on how to get funding. And they, they knew how to get it. So I went across the railroad tracks listening to that old man. And I start bringing white folks over. Look at this. Look at these nappy head babies. And the white folks started helping. So I went where I saw the spirit at with them white folks. Man, them coming and bring. They helping me do all this. They opened doors for me. They let me go in prison. They let me teach here. They opened doors for me, man. They, them, they wouldn't open the doors. And boy, when I landed, when they, when they saw I had all them kids at the classy lady, and now I'm fucking with them white folks. They sent Kiev Tatum. They sent every major pastor at me. They sent, man, every pastor came after me. And I was their protege. They used to take me out to, I, I mean, I, I called a couple of them dad. Because I was looking for a father. I was looking for a man to connect with. They was trying to play on me. I was the poster child for the juvenile system. And they wouldn't even let me go in the juvenile system. Real, they black people. I'm in every school in Dallas. I'm in Wise County, Van Zandt County, Kaufman County, not Tarrant County, because of the black people. They wouldn't even open the doors. Black principals wouldn't even let me come to their school, but Sam Houston would. Arlington would. They would let me go in if I went with Johnny Muhammad and Luther Perry, if I went with the vanguards. I couldn't go separate from them. So I set out and I built my own way. And as I was working, somebody said, hey, Pop, you need to look at that boy Charles. He, I mean, you need to look. I think you'll like him. I don't want to listen. Look at no nigga Charles. And they got that old man to look at me, and he started watching me. And I got a call one day. Hey, young man, I've been paying. I've been watching you, man. Can come down here. And so he invited me. And man, I said, I say, man, that old man down at the class later want to meet with me. It's like meeting with the Godfather. So I went and got my people, and we went and sat down at the table. And I told him what I do. And he told me, I don't want to hear no motherfucking lies. Don't come down here lying to me. And he gave me the keys of that club, and all them niggas were looking at me. He gave me the keys. The first time I ever met him in my life, man, this man don't know if I steal, if I, man. And I lied to him. I said, Pops, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to feed. I'm going to clothe. And I'm going to educate. And I don't know how, I ain't know how I'm going to do that. Nigga, I ain't have no money. But I did it. So, as I'm doing this, they're coming to me. Every black preacher y'all done been to in the east side area. I ain't gonna y'all I done named their name before. They coming to me. 
Now they want them, man, you don't need to be down there. When you get away from him, man, you can use the church. So when I go to them and say, hey, man, I got 50 kids. They come in six days a week. But what time they get there, man? Some of them get there at 7 in the morning because they don't eat breakfast. What time they leave, man? Some of them don't leave at 8 at night. You got them that long? Well, let me go talk to the board of directors. When they go talk to the elders, they come back. Pastor Chris out there said $50 an hour because they saw I was dealing with white. Man, they playing on me, man. Every preacher, mama, mama told me go find me a preacher, and that's what I did. I started fucking with the preachers first. I don't, I don't preach, I don't spoke in all their churches. I don't spoke to all their youth congregation. But they was jealous, I guess. I don't know, man. They, they, they shunned no. So I went across to them white folks, and them white folks took me in and adopted me, and they adopted my organization, and they started coming to the classy lady. White women on Sundays by themselves. The black sisters, Deborah Peoples, Mary Ellen Hicks, man, them people ain't never came down there. And they saw what we was doing. Sandra Lee gave $500 one time. And I went to Pops and I said, hey, Pops. And I, I think we was down there probably five days. She gave me 500 I went to Pops. I said, hey, here go a hunter, Pop. He gave it back. I said, no, young man, you don't know. You go do. And I think we went. And, and bought t-shirts for the kids. Uh, we went on the field trip. We went to Hurricane Harbor. The black people in it, so they got to say I'm crazy. They got to do me like they done Jesus and all the other young people who make them look. They've been here all this time. Deborah people have been here saying they've been here in the community doing all this this time, right? Deborah people, look how old she is. How she go come govern now? Why she hadn't done nothing before now? We need youth. We don't need another John Biden coming. We don't. We need young people, vibrant, that understands. They still talking about day day. They they got the they got the microphone with the white folks. They talking about day day. They not talking about our struggle. They ain't talking about eight gang and murder gang. Them that don't even come up. How can we get programs and jobs? That's why I brought Maddie to Pops so we can talk ape gang and murder gang and go yayo yeah, without saying the names. And she asked, how can, did you hear? She didn't come with talking points. That white woman didn't show up sounding like a politician with talking points. She came and listened to an old fool. And she had questions after listening. But the other blacks around here, they won't come talk to us. And we the street guys with the influence, we stop crime. We wrestle guns out of niggas' hands. We repair the houses that get shot up by the gangbangers. The preachers don't do that. We do that. So I'm saying, I, I know all of these, so how can we give it to Deborah when she's been, she's almost 70 years old. She should at least have something done down there. So I'm saying we got a white woman with a John Brown spirit. And y'all y'all having all of these meetings and y'all having all these political engagement inside the church. And y'all telling us inside of a house of God with Christian principles and values, vote for color. Don't vote for spirit. Y'all are giving us the things that evokes the hate. Y'all ain't giving, y'all are not in God's house bridging the city together. Y'all are going against. So how can, I'm, I've been watching all y'all go to church. We've been watching the black pastors. Why do you think none of your children go to your church? Why do you think none of your children pray to what you pray to? Why do you think so many niggas went to prison and went and found some more niggas guards in prison and came back with a new religion and they mamas them had? Because they've been watching y'all. Why do y'all think I talk about my mama's God so? Because I watched that woman do what a God. So why you think your kids don't talk about your God? Why you think... Y'all children don't go to y'all church, Deborah people, because y'all don't have the spirit of God that we need to see to follow. That's why I'm so disrespectful, because I don't see the spirit of God in y'all. Y'all are some of them, y'all Y'all ain't loving and kind to white folks. And I got my mother over here telling me that God has no respect of color. Y'all are trying to convince me and tell me that white people is bad and I grew up in white folks system. I'm a state baby. I killed a white man as a kid and throughout my life in the juvenile system, 
it was always a white person who opened the door and got me here. God could, my people didn't, wasn't standing at the door. They didn't help me when I first, when my mama helped me get my 501c3. Johnny Muhammad, Luther Perry, Chad Mary, was Mary Ellen Hicks, uh, uh, them people didn't help me to understand. It was white people asking me, Charleston, well, do you, do you know about your state comp? You, they just took my money to get the 501c3. I paid a black man to get me the 501c3, Gary Ivory. My mama loaned me five. My mama actually gave him the $500. He got me the 501c3, but he didn't teach me about my state comp number, state secretary. He didn't teach me about that. He didn't teach. He just took the money. And I thought he fucked me. And I called and told him, nigga, I'd show up there. So as I'm going along, working in the juvenile system and meeting other organizations, they're telling me, well, Charleston, you have to, you have your board of directors. Your body. Man, he set it up, but he didn't teach me. But they got me speaking to their kids. But they're not teaching me what I need to go to beat them, to replace them. Past, why you think pastor don't have no young protégés? I once heard Dr. Miles Monroe say, if you don't have nobody to replace you in your absence, if, if you gone and everything stopped, you failed. So, I, they, they, so I, they rejected me. I ran to Jesse Taylor, went to them. Kiev Tatum showed up like my daddy. We used to hug, man. Then one day he called me and said, man, you know they killed Malcolm X for talking like that. He showed a coward. And I'm saying, man, all these preacher niggas weak. All these preacher niggas weak. Man, God, I can't connect with them. And the old man called. And I found my preacher. I did what my mama told me to do. My mama told me, son, go find your church home. And find you a pastor that you can submit up under his leadership and his covering. And I did what my mama told me to do. I went all around the country. I was at Beyonce Church. Derek Muhammad, E.A. Deckard, I met the Muslim, I met, I, I, I went looking. And then I got a call. An old man said, I've been watching you. And I want to talk to you. Come down here. When I went down, they said these kids don't have nothing. They don't have no swimming pool. They don't have no panties, no socks. And so I started going down there looking. And getting on Facebook reporting what I was seeing, man, these babies down here with nappy half, but I was saying nigga babies, because I heard that old man talking about a nigga nation, and the black people in the community started getting me, he calling them old nappy head nigga babies, y'all call them that when you get mad at them, I was listening to the mothers coming down there talking to the kids, you stupid motherfucker, I'm going to beat your goddamn ass when we get home, so I started speaking like the community and stop six. I had just come from traveling around the world. I was articulate. I didn't cuss. I didn't smoke weed on camera. I went down there and joined the poor people. Like that old man says, you gotta go live with them. So I went and live. I ain't never in my life been poor. I ain't never in my life been poor. I went and joined them people. I slept with them. I ate with them. I slept in my car down there. They thought I was homeless. Niggas were talking. They, man, I had a big house. I slept behind the bar and would wake up and the club is filled, looking bummy. I was on a mission studying and I, and I sat behind the bar for years. I never went and, and interacted with them people. I didn't fuck no bitch down there. I wasn't out the classy lady. I ain't fuck now. I wasn't them hoes down there. All them years I was down there, I ain't touched nothing. I was studying. I had the kids during the daytime and at nighttime I watched their mamas and daddies and learned everything about them. Then I started watching the community, the prostitutes, the, 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 the construction workers. I started looking at everything, sitting out there with that old man. And I would come to Facebook and report it. And the people say, oh, he talking about black people. He putting black people down. I was reporting to y'all what I saw, taking pictures, walking, recording it, going downtown, telling the white folk, man, they got STD statistics. They were dragging me out. Them black people didn't come down there when they see them white folk were dragging me out. I was by myself. Johnny Muhammad was giving me the information and hiding. Because he knew if he told me something, I was going down there and attack them white folks. He was setting me up, man, to be targeted by white people. He was giving me the information, but he wouldn't come stand with me, or he wouldn't say it. 
So I saw he was a coward. I met with T.A. Sims. He was a coward. I met with all, met all of them, homie. And I stood down there by myself, taking on my city government. And them pastors got together. And the reason the pastors got together is because Dacian Steptoe killed the police officer out of fear. An officer lost his life out of their neglect to follow procedural that they taught me. So our preachers got together and said, what are we going to do about Charleston White? Because I done got bigger than them now. Now I'm meeting with their enemies who they was getting money from, Rick Van Houten, the president of the Fort Worth Police Officer. So I'm meeting with him and we're buddy buddy. Carolyn Gilmore, Deputy Dean, Ty Hassel, Deputy Crowd, me and Chief Joel Fitzgerald having private lunches. Now they use me. I'm caught up in something I don't know. And my people let me be over there playing with these white folk. I ain't playing. I'm really trying to help. Man, I, I'm in over my head. I'm sincere. Ain't nobody sincere in politics. It's agendas. I'm coming down there with a sin. And them people turned on me, my black people. So you think when I get in the church, I, man, I ain't got no respect. I ain't got no respect. I resent them people, homie. It's not my job to bridge the gap and mend the wound between us. They're my elders. It's their job to come to me and say, listen, brother, listen, young son, I'm not a bitch. Let me tell you who I am. I call Deborah Peoples a bitch. I don't once call my grandmama one, not to her face, but she was a drug addict and I didn't have, she was a drug addict and I saw her when she was on drugs. Man, fuck man, yeah. But I don't call her that today, because I don't see that in her. I watch the change, right? That's Granny now. I go sit and fuck with Granny. There ain't, ain't no dope fiend to me no more. So, I don't give a damn about your grandmama. Them other people, I don't have no connection to them. Fuck them. They supposed to say, man, let, let's get on the phone with that little dude. And let's have a conversation. Like everybody else who have, that they feel like I've done them wrong. And when I hear them tell me how I'm done wrong, then the spirit convicts me and says, yeah, nigga, you were wrong. And we become friends after that. But all these elders, all these elders, man, don't act like that in the church. But y'all acting like this in the church. I'm watching The Rock, the moderator. Been listening to this man on Heaven 97 all my life. I'm watching this man beat up on a black woman for men. No respect for Kelly Allen Gray. I'm watching. So my spirit convicted me. Say, man, you wrong. Then I get attacked. I'm watching our black leaders and our black elders sit in private closed door meeting being unruly and these white people is giving them information that can empower the people in the community. Why y'all here fighting with them? Take this information and go get it to them poor niggas. They turned on, they turned on me for that. Because I stood up in front of white people and told every major black pastor in this city, y'all wrong. And y'all don't do nothing for these niggas in the city no way. None of you niggas do. And they, boy, they've been hating me ever since. Because the white people see Charleston is stronger. His, that, that boy's voice is stronger. I don't care what he act like. So, when they done that the other day, they got that white woman. Yeah, yeah, now he praised white folks so much. Now, they want me to stand alone on my own. They want to discredit my name. And for whatever reason, man, you can't do what I've done and be at the White House and, and doing a D Department of Homeland Security and end up in the crazy house and everybody saying you crazy. And when you come out the crazy house, you rise before the nation and before the world. Them people tried to bury you, shoot you up with drugs because the black people called the hit. 
Man, that broke my heart when I found that home. I, that's what made me leave, man. I went to California, man. That man, that boy, that, that crushed me. Did all them black pastors, homie. And they, all them black pastors was in on that. Eddie Griff, man, they, oh, they, they, what are they, what are, they said, what are we going to do with Charleston? And they saw an opportunity to do something with it. So that's why you keep seeing them saying the MHMR. That's why you see Eddie Griffin and them saying Deborah people voters done been threatened. They trying to play that game with me again. But the white folks said, nah, uh-uh. They see now. They tried to discredit me with the white people. So I had to go to California and come back with a game plan. I wasn't working in the community no more. Fuck that community activist shit. For to give me some money and build in the community. Need them motherfuckers, so that's what I've been doing. So I never stopped the work. They have stopped the work because the money from the city that they was getting for all these decades have stopped. So they don't do the work no more. So now they got new emerging leaders like Pastor Rodney McIntosh, Roger Fogel, that's dealing with the powers to be. Because of my character, before I fell, I was able to rise again coming out that nut house. They let them white folks put a mean title on me. They say I kill and I want to be killed by the police. They let them white folks put a label on me as being a murderous, suicidal guy. So that's why they say certain things like that. Because they know the plan and plot that they done against me. So they do another one. He here. Let's get him there. Because we know he go do the food. And I am. If you fuck with me. Anywhere and everywhere. So. My people done that. So when I got that information. Man I left this city. Resentful. And I went and fixed. The inner me. Nigga. You run around this motherfucking town playing bad. This what a bad motherfucker got to go through, nigga. So don't cry now, nigga. Toughen up, nigga. You up here by yourself now. You don't just walk the streets, nigga. Figure it out. You a bad, bad motherfucker got to be by themselves, nigga. Some of them be like Mandela was locked up 40 years and confined. Bad motherfuckers. Now, ain't no bunch of... No, nigga. You just... You talking that bad shit. You... The next Dr. King. This what they got to go through, nigga. So once I went through my conditioning... Nigga, I came back, and this is what they said. Never do people fall in politics and rise back up like Charleston have. I didn't fall. <laughs> I evolved and got stronger and wiser. And now I can look back at what I was doing, that's my training to see they doing the same thing. They caught in emotions. They go before white folks with no solutions and no substance. So now I talk with substance and solutions. I ain't talking about STDs. Uh, I ain't talking about prostitutes or uh, teenage. I, got, I talk substance and solutions. Economics. We got to build something so they don't do that. We got to create something to change that. And now I'm more powerful than ever. Now Kwame Brown mentions my name. Salute me. Now I just submitted a contract to the federal government where I was selected to go in over 122 different federal prisons. And I'll get paid from anywhere from $2,500 to $3,000 a speaking engagement plus food, travel, per diem, and all that. I just sit back and play the role of a fool. And I got y'all fool because y'all really think I'm a fool. <laughs> My elders reject me, so I rejected them. Think how powerful and how much more effective we could be if Deborah Peoples and I. Just think about that. Me and Jesse Taylor, Jesse Taylor was a national delegate to the president. A national delegate. If Jesse Taylor ran for a congressional seat, man, them white people are helping become it. Why wouldn't they work with us? The white people do. 
They don't pay us. It's no records of I've never applied for a grant. Cause didn't nobody ever show me how. Nobody ever showed me. The white people helped me develop the program and say, hey Charles, you can charge this for this. Find this. you know, they pointed me in the right direction. And they gave me a book. Bart LeBeau. Bart LeBeau was the executive director of the Annie Casey Foundation in Washington, DC. Every November, I would go to a national convening with the campaign Fair Senator of Youth. I was a part of a national organization called Incarcerated Children's Advocacy Network, and we was working on getting juvenile life without parole abolished. So they picked me to go before, so they, they, when they groomed me, I, I worked with over 50 U.S. congressional members on laws and legislation, not just in Washington, D.C., here in Texas. Raise the age, Texas Criminal Justice Court. I got all this long shit. I do trainings for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Why won't our black people? Say, man, we need that young brother. He's strong. They not once. Jesse Taylor, Rodney McIntosh, Joe Blow, we done created a, a, a trucking university. All them niggas that was mad at me about the crippling blood shit, them niggas ain't mad no more, cause now I get them, help them get jobs. We helping niggas buy box trucks. Why wouldn't our elders connect with us? We only got one elder, that's that old man. And every, every, every young person in this city pays homage and respect that old man more than they respect their grandmothers, their mothers, Deborah Peoples and them. Deborah Peoples don't, none of them people got the love that Weasel got from the youth of Fort Worth, Texas. When he talked, we all listened. I listened to him before mama. I was rejecting mama because mama couldn't teach me how to be a man. She could point me in the right direction. I stopped listening to mama. And the more mama talked to me, I have to wrestle with resentment. Mama, I need you to be quiet. I need to hear a man's voice, mama. I'm starting to resent you because you, I need to hear a man's voice. I've been hearing your voice all my life. Mama, just be quiet, mama. Let me figure it out and make some mistakes. I need to hear from a man. You sit back over there and just pray. And that's what mama did. She knew her son would become a man when he can say, mama, mama, just sit back and pray, mama. Whatever go happen, let me find out, mama. Let me find my man, mama. I don't need your preacher man. They work for you, mama. They don't work for me. And I found one that worked for me. And now I'm the strongest nigga in the nation with a voice that go around the world now. But my elders that plotted against me, just like Abraham, they done Abraham. Hey, man, it's all in every story. When the young rise, the old try to get him, they'll kill him. They had them white folk get me and put me in a nut house and shoot me up with, I don't even know, to this day, I don't know what kind of drugs them people were giving me. And they told me it had no side effects. And man, when I got out, it had side effects. I lost my voice. My muscles and nerves locked up. So I had to go put that weed in me. Try to get that dope out. I, mean, I don't know what them people shot me up with, man. They were, that shit fucked me up. It took, man. Why he smokes, man, them, man why, why wouldn't I smoke weed? They shot me up with all that dope and didn't ask me, didn't give a damn what it'll do to me. I know what this'll do to me. I ain't signed no papers for none of that shit. Ain't no doctor sat and examined me for me to be taking this shit. And they knew that. And they knew that. Our people, that wasn't white folks that done that. White people couldn't have done that. Man, you see how they kick about our Tatiana Jefferson. You see how they kick about Jackie Craig. Them white folk know they can't do that to us. The whole, the whole city go come. They gonna make noise. They might not hurt nothing. They go at least come say something. Them white folk know they couldn't have done that without black people saying. And that's what happened. They always go to the black pastors. That's why they always stop at the church. God put in my spirit to get her because she ain't gonna stop at the church. She gonna come and stop where the least of those are. And I've been, I went and joined them people. My mother used to say, son, why you got them kids down there? I used to take my daughter to the classy lady. That motherfucker full of weed, man. My daughter got allergies, man. She with me though. She knows, yeah. She, man, she's nothing. She hearing all kind of things. Bitch ass nigga, ho ass. That little girl, oh, I'm sorry, baby. They go where they daddy go. My kids got to see that too. They don't know nothing about that. 
I took my kids with me down there. My daughter once spent the night with me down there because I ain't have no car. And Joe Blow came down there and said, no, nah, man, come on home. I'll give you a ride home. Man, don't have your daughter down here. Nigga, I was in tears sitting over there up under that, over there where we chopped wood at, homie. Saying, damn, nigga, you ain't got no ride home. Feeling like a failure. You got your daughter out here, nigga. You helping all these other, you getting away barbecue, helping people. And you ain't got a ride home, homie. So you think I ain't gonna resent these old motherfuckers, nigga? And they never came down there, and we got a white woman to come to the ghetto and meet with a nigga? Just hollering, nigga? Why wouldn't we pick her? Dr. King said, you judge me by the content of my character, not the color of my motherfucking skin. So if we go honor him, then why wouldn't we honor her? Because she bypassed the church and came to the people. I called her people and they said, no, we can't do it. Uh, this will be the last thing, just, you know, too much time. And then I called directly to her through somebody I know that would get me directly to her and said, man, ask her would she be willing to meet with the old man. I hadn't even asked the old man yet. I don't even know if he, I don't know what he'll say. But ask her first. Let's see if she'll do it. Yep, she'll do it. The mother people told me no. I ain't say none of them. Say, Pops, uh, say, man, uh, you think you can meet with the woman? Man, I don't want a man, he go off on me. Man, you fucking with me, come on, plot, man, do it, man, man, come on, man. You told me to go get shout dog them and get shout dog them some job. Pops, I can go get shout dog them with this woman. And he agreed. She was willing to go to the gambling shack. She was willing to go meet him at the gambling shack. But I said, no, I can't do that. I got to find a neutral ground. We'll meet. I know he'll go to Jesse's house because he got to go by there on the way to work. Say, Pops, you think you can come by Jesse's house at 5 tomorrow? And when she showed up by herself, he say she go show up with police and everything. She go have a secret service team, and that white woman showed up by herself. Warm my heart even more then, boy. When these people who look like me never even came to meet me and speak against me, never even came to help me, saw me downtown squabbling, get drug out, saw the pictures of the prostitutes, saw us when we had the twins living at the classy lady, two girls. Them, them Deborah people them and Trish them didn't come rescue them two girls. Marshall and Ramona Weathersby came and got them two girls and took them to Marshall Mama House. Five women came down there and got them girls out of there after they just got arrested for prostitution because they was homeless and they had the trespassing tickets in the projects and they went to jail for prostitution. That's when I started talking about teenage prostitution. I don't just go to talking just to be talking. Something happened when I'm talking. No, I'm, not, I'm kicking, pimping. But when I'm a, no, something happened. So how can them people, Robert, whatever, man, my mama, listen to this man when he was on Heaven 97. Deborah Peoples is pops in them age. What have you done from now to now to stand before us with these white folk? That's why they don't take us serious. We'll send anybody down there just as long as they black. We're not looking at the contents. I'm not saying Deborah Peoples is a bad woman, but actions speak louder than words. When you look at what that white woman been doing with black children and for black children in the name of the organizations of working with children, then you got to say she at least about the future. Deborah and them is still talking about shit that happened years ago, the past, what used to be. We can't keep sitting at the table beating on our chest. Yeah, when do we become rational? When do we start logically talking? And when are we going to stop talking and start producing solutions without their involvement? We wait for a police shoot. Now we need, we coming up with, with, with the problem, but we ain't got no solutions. Without them telling us what the solutions need to be, we need to be showing up saying, this is what we doing. That's what I did. 
I never went down there and asked for a motherfucking thing. I showed up saying, this is what I'm doing over at the Classy Lady. you either with it or you're not with it. But I'm doing it. And people started joining in to help me do it. So I never had to apply for a grant. Because white people taught me. Charleston, a Jewish, powerful Jewish white attorney say, Charleston, if it's not documented, it's not hap- it, it, it didn't happen. I said, huh? She said, do you, do you record this? Do you shoot videos? Do you take pictures? I said, no, ma'am. She said, you need to start doing it. She chastened me. So that's why I started taking pictures of everything, documenting it. You got to write your own narrative, Charleston. And people will say, you never done that work. So I documented it. She said, because if you don't document it, it never happened. He always putting it on Facebook. Everything he do, he put it on Facebook. Don't you take pictures every time you go to the club? So I was documenting it. Charleston, nobody's going to give you money. This is what she told me. Nobody's going to give you money if you can't get money out of your community. No corporation. You won't get any corporate sponsorships or donations because they see your community as your constituents. And if you're really doing the work in your community, your community would give to you. Charleston, so nobody's going to give you your, your, your organization any money if you don't get any out your community because those are your constituents, the people you represent. So if they don't give to you, then obviously they don't believe in you. So why would anybody else, why would a corporation give you any money and your community don't give you any? So you have to start trying to figure out a way to make hype be self-sustainable. I was selling barbecue. Man, I was doing garage sales out the classy lady. I was doing that, making it self-sustainable. I never asked. I got on Facebook and said, hey, this is what I'm doing. I never said, well, I need somebody to bring me tennis shoes. I never said that. I built the art. And what I needed came to me because I was building it. This is what we're doing. And people were showing up. White people taught me that. Learn how to be self-sustainable so you don't become dependent. So this is why I brought up Bart LeBeau, the executive director from the Annie Casey Foundation. I stayed at his house for three days. Very, very, very powerful guy. He gave me a book that was written by Jews. And it's called The Revolution will not be funded. And I read that book twice. And it breaks down the whole non-industrial, the, 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 the non-profit industrial complex, right? That's what it calls it. The non-profit industrial complex. You just call it the non-profit. Oh, I got a non-profit. Oh, I got a non I'm starting my non-profit. The book, The Revolution, would not be funded. We was told the revolution would not be televised. So we looking for it to be televised, but we begging for funding to help us, right? We go to white folks and say, man, I need some some grant money to help my organization. Go help my people. They're not going to give you the funding to help your people. Why would they do that? The revolution would not be funded. You're going to revolute against them. Come on now. But you believe... Oh, I got a non-profit. Well, you don't have this knowledge that I have, right? So when I'm down here in Stop 6, I'm operating with a knowledge none of y'all have. I understand that I have a 501c3. And the only reason the 501c3 was set up was to hinder and or control the social movement after the civil rights movement. So they control your movement. So, man, I can't take that money. Well, what I'm going to do, God, just do the work, nigga. And let me worry about the rest. Do what Noah did. Just go build an ark and I'll send the animals. I got you. So that's what I did. The classy lady was the ark. So. It was set up. The sole purpose of a non-profit organization is to control and hinder your social movement in your community for your people. Yeah, give them a non-profit. Give them a 501 c 3 and we want every dollar you get itemized. I want to know how you spend every dollar is what the tax man said. You have to itemize every cent. You can't have, you better save it. And so what happens and how 
pastors and, and, and nonprofit leaders and community leaders get tricked is they take the money and they forget the small print. Itemization. I want to know how every dollar, that's how they go get them with the PPP and the SBA money. They're not going to show how they spent the money. And so they give you the 501c3 federal tax exemption, but not many people know about the state comp. Secretary of State, your state got something to do with that too. So then you take the money and what they know because they created this nonprofit industrial complex, right, for us after the civil rights movement because the civil rights movement was a bad motherfucker so they had to control it the next time. And they had to find a better way to hinder it rather than kill the leaders. They can't keep killing the leader. They done killed Malcolm, Martin, Mega. They can't keep doing it. God damn, they got to find a better way. Nonprofit organization. So, churches were never supposed to become nonprofits, tax exempt status. Right? So, you get the grant money because you're always looking for the grant money. What tends to happen with a nonprofit? They hire their friends, they hire their mama. They go get their they girlfriend, their classmates, and they give them salaries. They have a board of directors who they just know. They don't understand that they have to have working board of directors, prominent people in the community who attracts the funding because of who they are. They get their mama. You go, you want, my mama going to be one of my men. She, why would you put her on her? She work at the call center. But well, they don't know, right? So let me stay on track because I got to end this. So... They get the money. 95 to 90 percent of the money is spent on overhead. What do you mean by that? Why you think when they get them nonprofits, new cars come along? They look so they gotta look to par now. They gotta go find a building. Say y'all come see my building over here. I just opened up my building. So they're gonna go get a nice building. They go get nice furniture. All that come out the money. Mama, I'm gonna pay you twenty thousand. So now they gotta set themselves a salary. I gotta buy. So you see, I'm, cause nobody wants to do this for free. That's why not many people volunteer. Let me stay on top. So, so now after they get the building, get the furniture, get the van or the car, had a few lunch meetings, then traveled a few places, business travel, uh, maybe paid rent with it. Now, the, the, they got the building going. Now it's time to do the work. You got your building. You got your furniture. Now you're in the community. Now it's time to do the work. But you got very little money. Now you're looking for more grants. Because in the book, The Revolution Will Not Be Funded, it says majority of nonprofits will spend 90 to 95 percent on their money paying salaries and trying to keep the lights on and keep the doors open and only five percent of that money actually goes back into the community so with that knowledge i came to the community and if so man how can we help you man go get this buy toilet tissue so i never took the money say man when we gonna start getting paid man so Jesse and everybody, man, they, man, you don't want no money. I was trying to process this knowledge and information. They thought I was a fool because I didn't want the money. Man, and I, I didn't want the money. I'm trying to process how to move forward without being hindered or controlled by the, you see what I'm saying? The, so I'm saying, no, nah, man, so I'm turning down money. So now the white people locally saying, well, man, Charleston don't want anything. They bringing me the items that I need, the shoes, the t-shirts, the snow cone machine. Because if I get the money, I'm broke. I'm broke. So I'm going to put gas in the car. Me and the kids go get something to eat. Because I'm broke. When they give me the grant money, I'm poor. That's why most of your nonprofit people are begging for money. Because they're poor. And they need the grant money. And so what happens is, what happens is they get these nonprofits and they become welfare recipients. Based by way of grants. And if they don't get the grants... Their organizations slowly go away. And they complain about, man, I can't get no money. And it's not about the money. I figure it was more about the work. 
that's how I was able to draw the money from the community because they saw me doing the work with nothing. Even when I didn't have no money, I had an axe to chop wood. Even when I didn't have no money, uh, I could get on here and say, hey, man, uh, man, I'm broken the motherfucker, man, but I'm trying to get these kids. And, and Angel Webster, by the time she get out of work, she going to bring me $50 for gas money so we can take them. The people, I had to let the people see. And I never asked for money. I just told what was happening. Man, I'm broke in the motherfucker, man. Shit, I ain't got no gas. I'm about to run out of gas like more, but I got to get here. And when I run out of gas, I can get out walking. Shit, man, I done run out of gas. I'm walking down this motherfucker. I wasn't shamed, but I was shamed. I had to be obedient. God say, let the people see. It's ugly. Get ugly. Get ugly. Talk like them people. Grow your dreads out. Man, my mama thought I was on drugs walking around here with them dreads looking raggedy. Man, I had to go get ugly. I, I couldn't keep wearing a bow tie, dressing clean and pretty, going down there with them people. Man, I, I reflected the community. I started talking like them. Man, my mama and my brother and them started saying, man, you acting like that old nigga down there. Man, he acting like Weasel. Man, I became them people down there in the bottomless pit, talking like they mamas and and I took that shit down out of them white folks so they can see what was in the community. Me and Charleston and Chain, they turned away from it. They wouldn't got Jesse. Somebody had to go be what Jesus was to the world. Now, I ain't saying I was playing no Jesus role, nigga, but I went and became an ignorant nigga to show people what these people, how they act, and I'm pretending to be like this. So if y'all can't deal with me, y'all sure can't deal with them folks in the ghetto because they can't tell you what I'm telling you after acting ignorant, they can't work their way back from being ignorant to uh, articulation on why they doing what they doing. So when I start seeing, man, I got these people fooled. I start telling y'all I'm playing a con game. I'm a con man. I done played the coldest con game on the city of Fort Worth, Texas. And I'm telling y'all, man, I done created a character. I saw the movie Dolomite. Y'all saying he acting like Weasley. I'm saying the same shit he's saying, just in a different way. Y'all are heart him, but your hate for the real truth. But you're not listening to him, because if y'all were listening to him, y'all would be doing what I'm doing. I sat with that old man one time and said, say, Pop, how can all these people, man, sit around you and hear you say what you say and not take it and go act on it? He said, it's not meant for them to hear we all ain't got the same blood. Me and him got the same blood. The same ancestral blood. Everybody ain't got that same blood for the people. And so, when I learned what I learned from that old man, I didn't need the community no more. I had the teachings from the old niggas. And I can stand on my own in front of the world, talking how I talk, saying what I say, because I got what them niggas had then gave that old man that he gave to me, and now I'm getting to these babies. When they get hungry, they know where to come ask for work. They don't come ask for food.